Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Foskett and I'm Marketing Solutions Manager at DataZoo. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Data Activation in a Cross-Device World. Our goal in the next 45 minutes or so is to give you an overview of data activation, what it is, why you should care, and how to effectively activate your business's data. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping items. Uh, firstly, you'll be in listen-only mode to cut down on background noise. Um, the webinar control panel can be opened and closed by clicking on the small red arrow button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. If you have questions during the webinar, you can send them by opening the control panel and then typing them into the question box. We'll open the floor to questions in this manner at the end. Today's webinar is being recorded and we'll send you an email with a link to the recording afterwards. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers for today's session. We have Yasmin Porter, who is our Associate Director of Sales UK at DataZoo, and Fraser Steen, who's our Solutions Architect. And they're joined by Graham Hutchison, who is Head of Digital and Sky AdSmart at Sky Media. So with that, I'll hand you over to the very capable hands of Yasmin. Hi, and uh, thank you for joining the DataZoo webinar on data activation. Um, so before we begin, we'll just run through a brief agenda um, that we will work through for this webinar. Um, so firstly, a jargon buster. So I know that we use a lot of acronyms in this industry. There's a few that we'll touch on in this webinar as well. So we'll define what they mean and um, contextualize what they mean also. Um, secondly, explore the challenge. So what is the challenge that we are trying to address? Um, why should I activate my data? So why are we talking about this? Why is it a topic in the industry? Um, then what does success look like and how do we achieve success? And then finally, we'll be handing over to Graham to talk about a real world example of data activation with Sky Advanced. So jargon buster. Um, DSP, a demand side platform. So this is where uh, advertisers will buy their digital advertising space. So this includes mobile, display, connected TV, um, SSP, so supply side, um, so sell side platform. And this is where publishers will uh, sell their inventory. And then we have DMP, so data management platform. So this will house your digital anonymized data. So this may be cookies or mobile app IDs. And then we also have CRM, so customer relationship management. And this will house all forms of data. Um, and this can be non-anonymized data. So for example, household data or email addresses. Just to continue this onto one more slide, so first party data. So this is data that you own as a brand that you have collected on your consumers. Third party data. So this is data sold by um, companies that have been collected on consumers and you would buy this data as a brand. Cross device. So what do we mean by cross device in this sense? Um, so essentially being able to activate at user levels, um, and this is housed by a cross-device graph. So we attach digital data sets, so again, like cookies, mobile app IDs, connected TV IDs, to users. And then lastly, data activation. So activating or executing on your data in real time um, in our cross-device world on your digital campaign. So hopefully that's got everyone on the same page um, with the terminology that we'll use. So moving on to the data activation challenge. So I think it's important here to define what is the challenge we're working with and what's the scenario that we're operating. Um, so the challenge is data activation and cross device is the environment in which we are operating in. So you can see by this image that it's kind of bottom-up planning. So starting with the data <clears throat> that you have available to you as a brand. So here we have examples of website data, so cookie data, first-party data, third-party data. 
mobile app data and then in-store data. So the first question is always to ask, what data do I have available to myself as a brand? And then moving up a tier, where do I want to activate this data? And each of these um, pieces of data will have their own silo challenges when activating. So for example, on the far left with cookie data, the challenge may be the lifetime of cookies and them expiring after a couple of days. And then on the other end of the scale, in store data, you have the challenge of match rates when we look to activate. Um, and then once we've defined where we're activating that data, we plan and execute at a user level. And this is key. So activating your data, but executed at a user level. Why should I activate my data? So I'll just hand across to Fraser now. So, um, you know, it's all very well we're talking about, uh, you know, activating data and so forth, but, you know, let's contextualize why we would want to do this. And for me, there's three key reasons and three value points that, that data offers. The first being targeting. Um, I mean, most of us will be familiar with all these, these three things, but for targeting, you know, just to cover these points off, you know, this is a way to eliminate waste. Uh, to improve efficiency and effectiveness of your campaigns and reach the right users and effectively do more with less. Uh, the second part is, is measurement. You know, what, what, you know, what did I actually do on my campaign? What, what did I actually achieve? Did, it, did, I, did what I do, did work? And did I do what I thought I did? Because you know, quite often we try things and we don't often know if we achieve what we actually want to achieve. And you know, ultimately, what was the return on investment of what, what I've actually done? And lastly is, is insight. And insight is sort of, you know, the looking to the future piece. You know, this is what we've done. Uh, what more can we find out about this and how can we improve what we've just done and do better next time and get incremental improvements? So there are a couple of issues generally with activating data and, you know, the reason we describe it as a challenge. Um, and these two diagrams are put together kind of, for me, outline the, the main reasons for um, behind those challenges. So on the diagram on the left, I've just got an illustration of a couple of things. First of all, um, data is often collected in the form of uh, unique users or cookies or devices, and those don't correspond to actual users. We all uh, know that we use multiple devices, um, and you know quite often the, the numbers that you're looking at shrink. The value doesn't, the, the number of people you're actually reaching doesn't change, but when you measure them in a user level, this this data can shrink. The second, secondly, I've illustrated an example where there's a segment of three million users you're trying to activate on a, a publisher that's got an audience of three million users. I've just used these figures because they're convenient. Um, but in this example, it's just showing that you really need to look at your, your data in the context of the market that you're trying to activate it in. Um, you know, three million is a big number, um, but when you overlap that against another group of three million, then the expected overlap that you would get out of that is only about 200,000 users. So you may be sitting there with, you know, three million, a segment of three million users, but actually only able to activate or reach 200,000 of them due to you know, the fact that you're dealing with this in, in the context of a wider population. Um, on the right hand side there is just, a, I mean, it's an illustrative graph, but this kind of illustrates the way that data value or data scale or effectiveness of data drops off over time. And, you know, the, the actual length of time, the time scale will change depending on the format of data we're talking about here, but, you know, cookies, uh, you know, well known to have half lives that are measured in days, where you know device ID is a bit longer. But broadly, all types of data, um, it needs to be acknowledged that the data that you collected six months ago just doesn't have the same value or um, addressability as data that you might have collected yesterday. Um, now we move on to five whys. Um, just to give a bit of explanation behind this, this is the process that Toyota used before they implement any new strategy. They will ask why five times to ensure that it's something that's going to bring value to their business. 
So we've applied the same process to data activation. So to begin with, why do I need to activate my data? So very simply, it brings value to your brand. But why does it bring value to my brand? Because it increases your success rate. And <clears throat> just to define success rate, this, um, this is bespoke to what you're trying to achieve as a brand. So that success rate may be in-store sales, it may be digital KPIs, maybe downloading a white paper, selling a car, whatever that success rate is for you as a brand. But why does it increase your success rate? Because it reduces waste and you learn from your existing customers. So we can reach an incremental audience based off your current data set as opposed to learning from vertical data. But why does it reduce waste? Because it's a one-to-one -one user strategy as opposed to a broad audience-based strategy. And the example we always talk about to illustrate the efficiency here is even if all of your um, audience are males 18 to 24, not all males 18 to 24 are going to be your audience. So having a broad audience-based strategy will always produce some proportion of wastage. But why should I use a one-to-one user-based strategy? Because if we can start to understand attributed value, so not looking at linear CPAs for display versus video versus social, but understanding value at a user level, starting to understand the role each channel plays that wouldn't necessarily be evident in a, um, a linear CPA model. But lastly, why do I want to move towards attributive value? Because it's a step towards true marketing ROI. So understanding the ROI impact of what we are doing and again, moving away from um, linear CPAs. Now we move on to what does success look like and some strategies to be able to achieve success. So really from a high level, um, there are really three pillars of successful data activation. It's, it comes in three parts. Um, the first is you need to have a cross device user level view of your data. Um, data is quite sparse and collecting data on users and customers is often often quite difficult and often a challenge. So when you get those opportunities, you need to be able to uh, take that opportunity and activate it wherever you choose. So for example, you may collect um, in-store data or email sign-ups from um, some mark piece of marketing activity, but then want to run a campaign on, on mobile devices or connected TVs. And you need to be able to cross that bridge with the different data types. Secondly, you know, as I mentioned previously, you need some kind of strategy to, to expand the scale of your data. Um, frequently, um, in, in the majority of cases, the, the amount of data you collect, as I said, is quite sparse, um, but, and it's not really enough to fill the, the marketing objectives that, that, you, that people often want to execute on. So you know, what we'd recommend is a, a, some kind of modeling strategy where you can expand your data in a meaningful manner um, to, to achieve some kind of actionable volume that you can actually do something with. And finally, you need, um, you need to close the loop and you need to understand what you did in the context of your own data. Um, there are all kinds of metrics and all kinds of um, figures that float around in our industry, but unless you can do that in the context of what you know with your own data, uh, much of it's actually very difficult to make any sense of. And if we just um, spend some time on data activation examples, um, and you can view this as a hierarchy from relatively basic through to quite complex on the far right. Um, and I think it's important to highlight that retargeting, under, but under our definition of data activation, e.g. using your data uh, or activating your data in a digital environment, retargeting falls under um, data activation. So 
Data activation does not need to be um, highly complex and tricky. It can start with quite a basic strategy. Um, so we've highlighted retargeting here. Um, moving on from audience extension, which Graham will talk about in a bit more detail um, in the next slide. Um, CRM and DMP data activation. So we've seen success here specifically in the mobile world. So um, activating mobile DMP data, uh, specifically mobile in-app, to be able to segment users based off their um, usage of the app and how they're behaving in the app um, and create bespoke targeting strategies based on that usage. And then finally, measurement of non-digital and sales um, and actions. So being able to attribute back our digital activity to our end sales goal, whether that is a digital sale or whether actually it's um, a car dealership sale. And now we will we'll pass across to Graham to talk through uh, Sky Advanced Data Activation. Thanks, Yasmin. Thanks, Rosa. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, today I'm going to give you a, a brief kind of overview, a high-level view of um, a product we call Sky Advance. Um, first off, I just wanted to kind of set, set a bit of context around Sky Media and how we have had to change the way that we look at data and the way that we look at how consumers um, engage with content over the last few years. Um, if you go to the next slide. So we, we've essentially, across Europe, as a, as a business, Sky have about 22, 21, 22 million customers. Um, in the UK, that's around about 12 million customers, so subscribing customers. And if we think about how those customers engage with us or have changed the way they engage with us over um, the last sort of three to four years, there's been a huge amount of change. Um, Consumers are now very used to being able to engage in our content and across all of our websites um, when they want, uh, where they want. And it, what's happened is that's, that's meant in marketing terms that what used to be a relatively simple uh, picture has become a very, very complex one. And we have um, anything in, in each subscribing household, anything up to about eight connected devices per home and a consumer, a consumer base who are very familiar with how to, you know, how to engage with that content or um, engage across websites across all of those devices. So it presents um, a brilliant experience for um, a subscriber or a subscribing household, but in marketing terms, it presents, you know, a very, very much more complex um, landscape to try and navigate. So a huge amount of our focus as a business is around trying to help advertisers and agencies navigate that that very complex landscape. Um, the other kind of big uh, trend and, and, and the big piece that we've been focused on as a business is around understanding as much as we can about each one of our subscribers. And actually, you know, much like any part of our, our wider business, we have a huge amount of data flowing through our business at any one time. Um, for Sky Media, that the main pockets of, of data that we've pulled into um, a, our data management platform circle around kind of three or four um, main, main pockets. Um, what, one of those pockets is a, a panel base of, of about three million homes. So out of the 12 million subscribers we have, three million of those have, a, we, we have a viewing panel that dials back second by second data on every single program that's viewed, every single sponsorship bumper, promo bumper, and advert that is viewed across any channel that a Sky subscriber watches. So that could be um, Sky One or it could be BBC. So a huge wealth of data comes from this big viewing panel. We then try and get as, as granular an understanding of the, the composition of our household. So we use lots of third-party data vendors to help us really kind of bring a bit more granularity to how we understand each of our subscriber households. So we have a huge amount of third-party data that we overlay across those, those households. 
We then have a huge amount of data around um, our customers in, in our CRM database, and that really helps us understand what kind of products that our subscribers are engaging with. So whether they are movie subscribers or whether they use Sky Go in home, out of home, um, what regularity they use uh, the internet, all kinds of bits of data around um, how, our, how our customers engage with our product set. Um, and then the, the the other big pot of, of data that, that isn't quite as integral to this piece is around first party data. So what we're seeing a, a surge of is, is advertisers and agencies becoming more and more familiar with um, being able to use first party data as so a client's first party data to overlay against um, Sky subscriber data in order to create a match. Um, so really, if we if we think about Sky Advance and, and some of the challenges that, that we were presented with um, kind of through that, through that um, sort of three year period, we have a consumer base who are consuming across a huge plethora of um, devices. Um, we have a gra very granular um, view of all of those consumers, but when it comes to actually um, seeing where those consumers go when they go off Sky Estate or when they go online, um, we needed we needed a data partner that could help us really try and understand that in, in granular detail and therefore leverage a lot of our viewing behavior data um, in, in an online way. So we partnered with DataZoo um, to help us build, um, build a match from our very granular viewing behavior data and all of that other data I mentioned into basically an online audience or a digital equivalent audience through um, OneView, which I'll go into, I think, in a bit more detail on the next slide. So in terms of, of, of how, um, how the technology works, as I said, um, working through that flow diagram, we, we have a three million household panel of viewing data, um, which allows us to understand who's been exposed to what um, in those households. Um, we've then got a huge amount of website data. Um, we've also got some third party um, data through Sky AdSmart, which helps us understand the profile of a home. Um, so what their affluence makeup is, what their attitude to spending money is, how many cars they have, what the, the um, profile of the household is in terms of um, children or family. We then have a load of um, Sky Go user IDs. Um, so, so when a consumer goes on to, to use Sky Go, we have a huge number of devices, as, as I mentioned before. And then we have a huge amount of that CRM data around what kind of subscriber is this? Are they a, are they a, a sports subscriber? Are they a movie subscriber? Um, how, how long is their tenure, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a huge amount of data, all of which is, is anonymized um, so that, so that the, the, you know, the, there is no PII data that, that, that we're able to expose um, externally as a business. That's a really, really key, key element. And essentially what we did was partnered with DataZoo to help us build out that picture of when a consumer um, has, has been exposed to advertising on linear TV, can we then put a some kind of messaging, some tactical messaging in front of that user when we see them again in an online environment? And that online environment could be on sky.com or skysports.com, but it could equally be across a number of other um, places online that are off Sky Estate. So we combine all of that data, we match all of that data together, and we're able to essentially offer advertisers a much neater way of being able to navigate that complex landscape that I described earlier, where you've got um, consumers consuming across a range of our Sky platforms, but then going off into online environments where you know, historically we've, we've not been able to understand who, who, where they've gone and what they've done. Um, whereas with this data match, it, it really helps us understand that and therefore put in front of, of advertisers a set of products or propositions that allow them to truly understand and, and sequentially message them and manage their marketing plans across that, that kind of ecosystem. Um, so on the next chart um, gives us a bit of a, um, a snapshot of, of where we are with, with Sky Advance. 
there are three kind of main ways that we activate um, Sky Advance for, for customers. So there is a, a reach extension um, proposition whereby a TV advertiser might have run um, a TV spot campaign, a linear TV campaign, and then, so, and, and then wanted to essentially extend that campaign into an online environment. We were able to, to help them do that. Um, there's also a big, uh, a large number and a growing number of advertisers who are interested in sequential messaging. So, so they've got the idea of being able to put this big brand TV campaign together in front of their consumer, but being able to understand exposure of that household to that particular copy and then activate a sequence of ads online post the post that is a really really attractive proposition um, and then the third the third area has been around sponsorship so so the way that we're able to activate um, a, a tv sponsorship in in an advanced world is that we'd be able to understand exactly who's been exposed to a tv sponsorship and then extend that um, extend that reach or sequentially message on top of that that particular exposure. Um, so we've got a number of, of stats there on the chart around how, how we're getting on. So we're now fully out of test and learn. Um, we've run 140 campaigns across about 20 or so different categories. Um, we've got a real blend within those advertisers we've seen already who have used um, video as their main extension of the TV campaign. So into kind of short form and long form video. Um, some of them have gone into just display worlds and then there's been about 30 or 40 of those advertisers we've run so far who have used a blend of, of video and display to extend, extend TV campaigns or TV activity in, in the way I described. So I'm just going to now just take you through a couple of those slightly more real life examples of um, advertisers that have used advanced just to try and bring it to life for you. Um, the first one is is a leading auto um, who really did this this particular example was um, an advertiser who was spending quite a lot in dis in display and online but they didn't really have a joined up way about thinking thinking about their TV campaign and how that blended in with online so they wanted to really understand through um, through the Sky Advanced products, through through the Data Zoo um, device graph, able to understand that this this particular um, subscriber or consumer has been exposed to this many TV ads or the t TV creatives, and therefore I can um, run a a campaign online that essentially amplifies that that TV campaign in a really controlled way, and what what we found is is what we'd hope hopefully intuitively have found, which is that um, well, first off, the, the group of um, the group of consumers that that weren't exposed to the TV spot and were exposed to the online activity saw about a nine percent engagement uplift, which is which is a, which is a pretty good stat in itself. But but the key here is that those that were exposed to TV and were then exposed um, subsequently to the online campaign through through advance, there was a 12% engagement rate. So it's so a real kind of big lift there from nine to 12. Um, so, so yeah, very happy customer in terms of, uh, of an auto. Um, the next example is from a, a gaming company. Um, and really, this is a good example where a lot of the, um, the KPIs, the key performance indicators from online advertising campaigns and a lot of the performance indicators from TV campaigns are, are often diametrically opposed, but quite often don't, don't um, sync up. Um, and what we're trying to do as a business is design media campaigns around a specific KPI. So that, um, that can be different across different channel, but ultimately this is a great example where, you know, picking up on what Fraser was saying about measurability and being able to um, essentially validate, validate the effectiveness of a campaign, they were able to look at um, video completion rates in, in a far more tactical way. Um, and, and that was a great indicator to them that, that running um, a Sky Advance campaign across all of the, um, all of the online estate we were able to access um, really made, made that completion rate Video completion rate search, which was something that, that was really really important to this particular this particular business. The next example is sorry, next slide. A gambling brand, um, 
actually we'll, we'll, we'll skip to yeah the gambling brand so we actually did this was a slightly different use case so we used um some tv data to, to help them understand and segment the the audience they believed they were after and then we were able to create a digital variant of that um tv tv audience so so um, we were able to help them understand a lot more about who exactly they should be targeting online um, so we're, we're working with them on on running again now that we have that learning running a, a similar campaign again to, to really kind of tighten up their their targeting across across online and, and across tv and then the final example is from uh, a telco um, and this was really another great example where we needed to show a client who were um, investing we were considering their invest investment into tv and online and really needed some very kind of hard evidence around why they should be investing in both and in what mix and what blend they should be doing that and really this this campaign we in this campaign we were able to really isolate that that return on investment um so so that incremental reach that we were able to deliver through um sky advance improved their roi by by, by 160k um which was a really really good result for them and a lot of the time with what we find with these these new products that we try and bring to market is that you know, you're, you're really only going to get one bite of the cherry in terms of trying to get an advertiser to, to come on board and test something out. You need to be able to prove as accurately as possible how much this added to to the bottom line. So this is a great example of, of how being able to bring that measurability through um, through data, we were able to um, prove out this, this 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 platform and essentially turn an advertiser who was using um, sky for the first time into an advertiser that uses sky um, long term so that was really um, all the examples I had to talk talk through um, hopefully they were of interest I don't know whether um, Fraser Yasmin you're going to um, squ square off the the presentation but I'll, I'll hand over to you unless there are any questions Thanks, Graham. Yeah, thanks for that, Graham. Um, I think we have a bit of time now to open up to questions from the floor. Um, please feel free to type in any questions into the, um, the box on your screen. Um, we have one that came in during the presentation. Um, so this person has asked, um, I already have a DMP. What's the difference between a DMP and a data activation platform? Uh, maybe, Yasmin, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the simplest way to answer this is a DMP stores your data um, versus a data activation platform, or if you like, DSP would activate on your data. So that's the key difference, that DMP stores versus data activation slash DMP would activate on your data or execute on your data. Very concise, thank you. Um, another question we've had come through um, what kind of third-party data should I consider to help scale my first-party audience data? Um, I think the, the easiest way to answer this question would be, if it, especially if it was a prospecting campaign, that we would probably suggest uh, modeling from first-party data as a primary um, and then look towards third-party data as more as a secondary, um, just because there are acquisition costs for third-party data. Um, so modeling initially with first-party data and then um, secondary look to third-party data. Cool. Okay. Um, one more that's come through. Um, I suppose it's two questions, really. How does activating my data across devices affect my control over it? And how do I keep a safe level of privacy compliance? Fraser, do you want to take this one? Okay. Um, so I think the important thing is we've been talking about, um, you know, having a, a cross-device solution involved. And, you know, as long as you've got a, a chosen cross-device provider that can manage the identities across the different channels that you're executing on, you can maintain control over, over how you're executing. Um, from a privacy standpoint, um, it's important to engage with reputable partners. Um, most of our industry is fairly well wrapped up on this, um, but essentially, 
you know, you, you need to make ensure that you're dealing with partners that you trust uh, to have validated that the privacy compliance is, is in check, is in place at the either end. Uh, I know certainly from our perspective, um, you know, we, we've got a number of um, checks and balances and legal loopholes and anything before we start working with any partners just to make sure, you know, those pieces are in place and that we can be sure that they're privacy compliant. Great. Thanks, Fraser. Um, unless anybody has any further questions, oh, we've just had one come in. How do you guys deal with the varying of customer identifiers? An example being that within our business, we model everything at a household level as opposed to user or customer level, assuming there is a flexibility to go to whatever is specific to the business needs. I think I'll let Fraser answer that one. <laughs> So yeah, I mean this is a this is a challenge um, that's not unfamiliar. Uh, identifying users at user level versus household level can can be challenging. Um, there are multiple ways to handle it, and some of them depend on you know the data that you're using as your source data. If you're using data at a household level, then it might actually make sense to continue that part, continue down that path, and actually treat. Know, each household as if it were a user in order to main, re, uh, retain consistency. You know, we were talking about closing that loop earlier and being able to, to measure things within your own context. Um, likewise, if you've got things at a user level, um, there may be a way to sort of create a hierarchical structure where you, know, you can say you know, users belong to certain households. Um, and you know, there are ways to achieve that and there are ways to affect that with, with different technology. Um, the device graphs themselves, most of most of the ways that we look at cross device in market, uh, tend to be user based rather than household based. Um, so we can leverage a bit of that technology to try and sort of separate the users from the household, um, assuming we've got a, a consistent point that we can use on the customer end. Cool. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess we'll probably wrap up there, um, but if anybody on the call has further questions, then you can see our contact details on the screen, um, or I think you can also email connect at datazoo.com. Um, so that just leaves me to say thank you again to the presenters. Thank you to Yasmin and to Fraser and to Graham, um, and hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.